In this tutorial, we're going to run through W3 Total Caches browser caching settings. It's currently disabled, as you can see, so we first want to enable that by going back into General Settings, clicking on Browser Cache in the navigation menu at the top, and enabling that. And then we'll just save and jump back into the Browser Cache admin panel. So we've actually got a pretty big range of options to go through here, but for the most part, the options available per section here are the same, so it shouldn't take too long to get through this. The first option we have is set last modified header. This just enables us to send the three or four not modified responses, as you can see. So when a browser is requesting a certain resource, it can say if it hasn't been modified and continue to load the cached resource. The second option is set expires header. So that's just to set the expires header so that browsers are encouraged to cache files. Now, they don't necessarily cache files. It does vary browser to browser, but for the most part, uh, they will adhere to those rules. So definitely make sure you've got that one turned on. The next one is basically the same. It's just setting the cache control header uh, for the pragma and cache control header. So you can just turn that on. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, it should work for most browsers anyway. The next setting is to set the entity tag. So you should definitely make sure that's checked. It will make a small modification to your .ht access file uh, on Apache in order to set e tags or e tag headers uh, within the server response. Next, we can choose to set the W3 total cache header. Now this just helps assist in identifying optimized files on the server and you should turn that on. If you have any problems and you think that might be the case, then you can disable that. The next setting there is to enable gzip compression and that's easily one of the biggest performance boosts you will get for your website so you should definitely make sure you have this enabled. No questions asked. Next we can prevent caching of objects after settings have changed. So if you ever make any changes to your website in the setting or to EW3 total cache settings you can just make sure that's enabled. So a new query string is generated and appended to objects, allowing the new policy to be applied and with speed, which is very good. Again, we can set query strings here as things we don't want to be cached, uh, for specified files at least anyway. I'm not going to specify any in here because we've set some exclusions up in the other settings that we've covered so far. Next, we can choose to disable cookies for static files and that's uh, it's a small speed increase on your website. It's not massive, but it can be useful. So we'll just turn that one on. Next, you can choose to not process 404 errors for static objects within WordPress. Uh, as it notes here, you can reduce server load by allowing the web server to handle the 404 requests. And I think that it's okay to leave this one turned off, but you certainly can turn it on if you feel that there is some benefit for you there. And just coming down to the end of this particular section, we have the 404 error exception list. So by default, it's the robots.txt file and sitemaps on your website. You can delete or modify these as you see fit, of course, but usually leaving those as default is fine. So we can just click save all settings there to make sure that all the changes we've just made are saved. And we just scroll back down to CSS and JavaScript the settings here are mostly the same. We've got set last modified header and the expires header, but this time we can actually set the expires header lifetime in a number of seconds. And generally this large value is absolutely acceptable because on most sites you are not usually updating the CSS and JavaScript very regularly. Obviously in a development environment that would be incorrect. You can set the cache control header as we discussed just a few moments ago and you can set the cache control policy here to any one of these. Now by default it's cache with max age of course so for most people you can leave that on there but if you want to more specifically set up cache control policy you can change that. The next array of settings are just ones that we covered earlier so we're not going to cover those again you can just skip back in the video to get a better feel for them if you want. We'll save those changes and then scroll back down. The next settings we have here are for HTML and XML. As you can see, all of these settings are exactly the same as they are for JavaScript and CSS. So you can have them running different settings if you like. That's the purpose of having them broken into their own areas in this configuration panel. 
but that's you know it's entirely up to you to figure out what you want to set that to but for most people just the default settings are fine and just towards the end here we have media and other files again the settings are exactly the same as they were before and once again using those as defaults is absolutely acceptable so when you're done making changes here click empty the page cache and your site will now be configured with these particular cached settings so that really covers the browser cache there's not a great deal to know the, the real benefit there is just making sure you have gzip compression turned on and if you have any questions about this please feel free to ask in the comments below